Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is grounding, and here's what we wish to learn today. What is grounding, and how does it occur, and exactly how can the process of grounding be explained? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Grounding is the process of discharging or uncharging a charged object. It is the process of turning a charged object into a neutral object. All objects have protons and electrons, but a charged object has unequal numbers of these two types of charges. It has an imbalance of positives and negatives. When we ground an object, we transfer electrons between the ground and the object until the imbalance of charge turns to a balance of charge, and the object has equal numbers of protons and electrons. When we use the word ground in this sentence, we're referring to a seemingly infinite reservoir or supply of electrons. And when we ground an object, there's a flow of electrons between object and ground, either to the object or from the object, that occurs until the object becomes neutral and has a balance of protons and electrons. A negatively charged object has an imbalance of protons and electrons with more electrons than protons. It has an excess of negative charge as represented in the diagram. To ground such an object, you would have to remove that excess negative charge, and you do so by transferring electrons from that object to the ground. It's most commonly done in lab environments by touching the object with your finger. When you do touch the object, electrons move from that object that's negative into your body until it has lost all of its excess of electrons. At that point, it has a balance of charge. In contrast, a positively charged object has an imbalance of protons and electrons with more of the protons than electrons. But you must be careful in explaining how an object with excess positive charge can become grounded. The incorrect explanation is to say that it loses some of its excess protons. But that's not possible because as we've learned, the protons are bound up in the nucleus of an atom and unable to move as a result of an electrostatic event. Only electrons can do the moving. So if you have more protons than electrons, the way you balance out the charge is you add electrons to that object until the numbers of protons and electrons are equal. This is done by transferring electrons from the ground to the charged object. And they continue to transfer until finally you've balanced out the charge and there's no more excess positive charge. As mentioned, in a lab environment, a person is often the ground, and by touching that charged object, electrons can flow from ground to object. Since grounding involves the transfer or movement of electrons between the charged object and the ground, it's important that they be connected by a conducting pathway. A conductor is a type of material that allows for the free flow of electrons across its surface. In this diagram, we see a charged aluminum pie plate charged negatively in a plastic straw that is connected to its surface. If I were to touch the end of that plastic straw, grounding would not occur because plastic is an insulator and it doesn't allow for the free flow of electrons. We would need a conducting pathway from the aluminum pie plate to the ground or the finger. In this diagram, we happen to see that the plastic straw is covered with aluminum, wrapped in aluminum, in such a manner that it's now a so-called aluminum straw. And when you touch the end of the aluminum straw, it provides the conducting pathway that you need to transfer electrons from the charged object to the ground. Now, this is me standing in the middle of the United States, and next to me is a negatively charged object. As you can see by the diagram, the blown up view, this object has an excess of negative charge. Now what we know about excess negative charge or excess electrons is they find other excess electrons to be absolutely repulsive. And one way an electron deals with the repulsiveness of another electron is it spatially distance itself from that electron. Now those electrons on this really small object in the middle of the United States can only go as far as the perimeters of that object. So when we ground an object, what we're doing is we're allowing it to have more space to spatially distance itself. So when I touch that object, electrons will flow through me into the ground or the earth 
And as you can imagine, that would give excess electrons considerably more space by which they could distance themselves. So I like to think of grounding as a charge sharing event where a charged object shares its excess charge with a much considerably larger object in order to minimize the repulsions. So at this time in every video, I like to help you out with an action plan. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, and tapping the bell to get notifications, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here's three resources that you can find on our website. Links to each of them are in the comment section below. Any one of them would be great follow-ups to this video, Ways to Make the Learning Stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.